This is Twit. The Ryzen 5 3600X, your review, uh, and you called it the gaming sweet spot, but with a question mark. Right. Well, the question mark. Well, I think the biggest issue with this uh, is that the 20 or the 3600 exists. So you have the 3600X, which uh, mm -hmm. came, was launched at 249. It's a six core, 12 thread part. Then you have mm -hmm. the non X variant, which differs in. Only two ways in the TDP, which is 65 watts for the non-X part and 95 watts for the X. And then in the clock speeds, which are only 200 megahertz apart. So you're, you go from 3.6 gigahertz space to 3.8 and from 4.2 gigahertz boost to 4.4. And that's what right. your $50 gets you. Now, in theory, I know in the previous generations, there's been differences with overclocking and some of the additional boost capabilities of the X series parts, but here it's it's much it's a much smaller difference. And what kind of was interesting to me going through this, because obviously the 3600X has been out for a little while now, but right. pricing has actually dropped a little bit on this. When I was looking yesterday, the 3600X was just selling for $10 less all of a sudden, $239 on Amazon. And that was the ships and sold by Amazon. So I'm thinking that might be a trend uh, let's see what pricing is right now. Yeah, still two thirty nine. So, it, yeah. yeah, so at that price, you're thinking, okay, a thirty nine ish, the forty dollar difference to get slightly higher clock speeds. It's still kind of a stretch because, and I don't have a non X thirty six hundred here to test, but just two hundred megahertz difference is not going to be that huge when you're <laughs> gaming, especially, but. I, I went through and I, I did some basic gaming tests. I used the same four gaming benchmarks I did with the uh, initial Ryzen 3000 launch. And then when I mm -hmm. went through and did some CPU benchmarks, I did something different because now we, we've gotten to the point where I think we're on our fourth revision of what is known as AGESA code, A-G-E. S-A, and I can't remember exactly what the acronym stands for, but it's basically AMD's processor uh, microcode, like firmware updates that get handed down by your BIOS, or your, your manufacturer of your motherboard, you do a BIOS flash, and you're on a new AGESA code version, which has pretty much been the case ever since these launched. So we started off with AGESA. It's a combo update 1.0.0.2. That was the original right. launch version, or rather the pre-launch version. So people like me who had the processors early, we were running this version. Closer to the actual release, and anybody, I guess, who waited until the night before to do their benchmarking, we're probably on version 1.0.0.3, which now has multiple letter variants appended to it. This is all very exciting stuff, I'm sure. Anybody who's listening is well, riveted it's, by it's this. It's important, though. It right? is important. It's very important you know, because... The AMD generic encapsulated system architecture, right, yes. which is... You know what gets handed to the motherboard vendors, which then turn it hopefully into something that performs at the memory speeds uh, and processor performance you want. But you know this was a big deal for anybody trying to run faster memory when the Ryzen parts launched two years ago. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And and that's one of the things you get with the more mature versions of this is better memory performance stability, the ability to have higher memory clocks running stable. This also affects the performance of the CPU. It affects the voltage that your CPU runs at, both at idle and load, mm -hmm. and it affects its boost characteristics. What's interesting about this is that AMD does not publish any release notes for any of these Ajisa versions that come out. You get it from your motherboard <laughs> vendor. You it can identify something. which version you're running. It does stuff, but they don't tell you what stuff it does. They're very vague about it which is unfortunate. I would love to be able to dissect it and say, oh, well, in this version, they've tweaked the core voltage to this at idle and the the, the state tables have changed or something for the way that it boosts. But uh, I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, actually, what's on the screen right now, if you're watching the video, is a comparison of the exact same uh, Ryzen 5 3600X being run on the same motherboard. The only difference is which version of the Ajisa uh, combo update was running on the board and it was 1.0.0.2 the pre-launch 
versus 1.0.0.3ab. And since AB, there have now been ABA, which was pulled, and now ABB, which was the one that went out and nicely disabled PCI Express 4.0 across the board. So actually running this 3600X on an X470 gigabyte board, I have full PCI Express 4.0. I'm running a PCIe 4.0 SSD. Everything works just fine. Great memory compatibility. Then you go off and update to the latest version from your vendor and all you know the PCI Express 4.0 stuff is taken away. Not that that really matters, but... 1.0.0.2 had very, very different voltage characteristics with this CPU. It liked to live up closer to 1.475, 1.48 volts. And even at idle, it was living somewhere between 1.45 and 1.475 and spiking very close to 1.5 as often as it needed to. And hmm. with the new version... Uh, the dot three AB, it was capped at 1.4. It seemed like a hard cap. So no matter what, it never spiked above 1.4. It actually spent quite a bit of time at 1.4, even at idle. It would drop down to like 1.425. But 1.44 is about where it wanted to be. And this is a pretty significant drop in voltage. And that makes sense when you look at the performance numbers because under load of course is where it's going to impact performance and you saw the same uh spiky behavior on the pre-launch version dot two where it was going up as as far as it as it needed to like 1.48 was a pretty common voltage under load and the the new version dot three ab was again capped at 1.44 it never seemed to rise above that at all so what this results in is some higher boost clocks it's sustaining higher boost clocks not by a huge margin but if you're talking like 40 or 50 megahertz that's not going to make a huge difference in games but when you start running very cpu intensive you know benchmarks and doing things like video encoding or transcoding, I should say, which is where I saw the biggest impact. It It's like looking at benchmarks without any sort of mitigations enabled and then looking at benchmarks with every single processor mitigation enabled on an, a, on an Intel system where you are you could potentially lose. We, we talked about this in the past. I think Pharonix did a really comprehensive write-up of the impact of the latest round of mitigations that affected multi-threaded performance for Intel, and they were losing up to, I think, like 14% in some benchmark instances, where this AGISA code change saw, if we're looking at Cinebench, almost no change. It was a few points, single-threaded versus multi-threaded, and multi-threaded especially. I ended up running the benchmark six times and averaging those numbers because they were so close that it was right. basically tied. Although the original... A GISA version ended up with a slight edge. Moving on to something else, file compression, uh, we saw a much more noticeable difference. Or now it's not a rounding error anymore. It's it's noticeable, but not huge. It, it was the 3600X running the newer version of that uh, microcode was slightly slower, but not too bad. When we move down to the X264 benchmark, that is basically just the results of four consecutive two-pass runs of doing some transcoding at 1080p using H.264. Pretty common task, something you might do in handbrake. We see the 3600X, which was pumping along at a, an average of 143 frames per second for the first pass and about 30, almost 34 frames per second on the second pass, which is always slower. Mm -hmm. All the way down, 10 frames per second lost on pass one and only a fraction loss on the second pass. So that first pass, though, losing 10 FPS, it, it took a lot longer to complete the benchmark. So you, you've lost a uh, place on the chart. Like they were, the 3600X was beating out a Core i7-9700K, the Ryzen 7 1800X, the Core i7-8700K, which is another six-core 12-thread part. That's the Intel and it was at 142.75 frames per second for the first pass of this. And then right. you'd go all the way from beating those processors to trailing them and being just a little bit fat. Well, still considerably faster than the Ryzen 5 2600X. Mm -hmm. 
but not beating out Intel Core i7s. So it, it seems like the initial launch of these processors and what the what the press had to work with originally, some of those benchmark numbers are, are a little inflated once you actually drop the core voltages down a little bit, which limits the frequencies a little bit. So it's it's going to behoove everybody who has these benchmarks and and these these samples to go through and, and retest everything. I've been kind of putting it off. I've been dragging my feet for this exact reason because Ajisa <laughs> just in changes. case one dot zero dot zero dot three dot a b a b comes yes. out because a b a came out and I could have redone the entire test suite then and then they pulled it and then they put out a b b and now at this point I'm waiting for a b c or you know. <laughs> M-O-U-S. Heaven forbid, heaven forbid they actually change the version number and maybe just do dot four and call that the final fully baked version of this because well, I'm they're, they're, go ahead. I'm sure they have their, I was going to say, I'm, I'm sure they have the reasons for the lettering system and, and I'm sure they have reasons which we would not be particularly thrilled with as far as, um, you know the 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 secrecy, the the hidden nature of what these these uh, GISA updates are doing. I part of me is looking at this, and there's not a huge delta between the 3600 and the 3600X, right? It's like right, right. now a 3600 is 197 dollars and 85 cents on Amazon. Um, 3600X is 240 dollars, but you know you don't get into it in your article, but it's amazing how close these two parts are. When you look at at some of the benchmarks, I'm kind of over yeah. here, one quarter of my eyeball, you know, looking at sort of the user benchmarks up on uh, uh, like user benchmarks, and there's a couple other sites, and these are not, you know, there's not a huge difference in the performance on these parts, and there's certainly been a, a lot more 3600 sold than 3600Xs, um, you know, and then there's that big old jump between the 3600X. You know, which is two hundred and forty dollars, and the thirty seven hundred X, which is three hundred and thirty dollars, which delivers a considerable bump in performance over the thirty six hundred or the thirty six hundred X. I mean, this is part of me is like, a, I'm not sure there's there's much point in you know. I think I'd rather have more memory or throw the money at a GPU um, if I was looking at between a thirty six hundred and a thirty six hundred X. And B, though, you know, what you may not have. You know, said, you know, you may not have said it quite directly, but implied when you said you need to retest everything is that maybe GISA was tuned for review performance at launch and now they're dialing it back a bit for sort of, uh, you know, overall stability or longevity question mark. Um, it yes. just seems odd. In fact, they've actually explicitly said it was for longevity that. You know, okay. we want these CPUs to run at a lower voltage to preserve their life. Well, right. After all the reviews have been published, it's a very negative sort of, you know, it's I, you could look at it as being a, a negative outlook on it. Or at the same time, it's it's just experience. I mean, this is not right. hot, hot, uh, like higher frequencies on press BIOS uh, for a graphics card or something I've experienced. And it's unfortunate. I mean, it because I I guess this becomes it, like your position on a chart matters more than what users will actually experience. But really, this is a fantastic product. They didn't need to do this. It could have been yeah. if, if really they thought the safe limit of this was 1.44 volts from the outset. Just just set it that way. Although I will say right. in their defense, I don't think anybody who was buying this CPU at launch and running the latest version of whatever BIOS their vendor supplied was running 1.0.0.2. It's, I mean, there were some that were a day or two behind, I think, and there absolutely still are these older mm-hmm. updates available. I know Gigabyte still has everything from the pre-launch dot two all the way up through dot three ABB, but. You know, if 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 it was indeed limiting people to 1.44 volts with this part right. the day they took it home, then you know I guess it's forgivable. But like you said, like the the reviews are already out there. The press was using right. this older version of the Agisa code. Uh, I think somewhere in my article just, I linked to this, but uh, Gamers Nexus they did a pretty extensive video, like 20 minute long video about these right. Agisa code changes 
and pretty much said the the difference was slight. The main difference is the voltage. They saw like 40, 50 megahertz difference, like the delta between the two. But really their money is on the non-X variant of this CPU anyway, which I right. completely agree with. Like you've been saying, you're paying a 40 or $50 premium for a minuscule improvement in performance. And the yeah, book is still cases, open... Like like in gaming benchmarks, three percent, five percent. It's it, it's one. I mean, to 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 amplify what you're saying is a. I think it's cheap of AMD to do this, and and b. A lot of the the sort of steps between like the 3600 and the 3600x, the 3700x and the 3800. Um, you're you're paying more money for a minuscule return like you know okay the 3800s had better availability than the 3700x but a big part of that is nobody wants to pay the extra money for a 3800 part that basically runs the same as the 3700x and and i don't see any point in paying the extra money for the 3600x over the 3600 um it makes me wonder like you know could amd have done more to sort of give you a better performance story you know, as they name things between a 3600 and a 3600X, between a 3700X and a 3800, um, rather than having these alarming, or I should say 3800X, um, you know, because like a 3800X is is a 60 or $70 delta over a 3700X, uh, and you're basically getting the exact same performance. 